Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. I'm here in Las Vegas at CES with the president of the Blue Radius Association, Mr. Victor Matsuda. Now, I know many of you have been buying Blu-ray or even Ultra HD Blu-ray disc, but you may not be aware that there is an organization called the Blu-ray Disc Association. So, Victor, can you please explain to our viewers the role of the Blu-ray Disc Association? Yes. First of all, Happy New Year, Vincent. Happy Good New to Year. see you again. Mm -hmm. uh, and thanks for having us on your uh, program here. The Blu-ray Disc Association has actually started more than 10 years ago. Um, and as you can tell, I mean, if you're aware of our working groups, we have three working groups that basically also uh, represents the main responsibilities of the Blu-ray Disc Association. There's a technical working group which works on all of the uh, creating the specifications um, that the Blu-ray Disc Association has. Uh, number two, there's a promotional working group that, the, uh, as, as you would see, as you can tell by the name of the group, it's responsible for promoting um, everything that the association does from the announcement of specifications, for example, but also helping individual companies uh, with the announcement of their products that are built to the specifications that the association creates. And then lastly, there's also a um, enforcement and compliance type of working group. And again, exactly the work that they do is exactly what their name would suggest as well. We just want to make sure that all the products that are out there, uh, the ones that have the Blu-ray uh, names on them, the different names, uh, they are uh, certainly in compliance with our specifications. And at the same time, we make sure that there are no, uh, as much as possible, no counterfeiters out there as well. So those are basically the activities of the Blu-ray Disc Association. Okay, sounds like you have a lot on your hands. Can you give us a general update about the 4K TV and also the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player and title in general terms? Yeah, um, and as I think you're sort of alluding to, Ultra HD Blu-ray has been uh, the newest and the most exciting uh, format for us uh, recently. Uh, I think we're in our third, heading into our fourth year with Ultra HD Blu-ray now. Um, and before we get into any numbers about Ultra HD Blu-ray products themselves, uh, again, as you mentioned, the key driver for all of this is actually 4K Ultra HD TVs. Uh, and it's just uh, even for this most recent uh, holiday season, 4K Ultra HD TVs was again one of the hottest, I think, consumer products out there. Uh, just exactly how hot uh, for 2018, we see that and the final figures are not in, but after uh, I think it was about a 40% increase year on year in 2017. In 2018, we're also uh, anticipating that final figures will show about a 34 percent increase in 2018 compared to 2017 for the sales of Ultra HD TVs. Uh, is that going to slow down this year? We don't expect it to. We actually expect uh, forecasters are pretty much uh, I think consistently saying between 20 and 25 percent growth is expected for 2019 as well. So again, very positive uh, information on the key driver for everything the BDA is doing these days with Ultra HD Blu-ray and that again is the 4K Ultra HD TVs. Also interesting note, um, this is uh, in the States, but what we're seeing is that it's trending um, in other countries just as much. Uh, the 60 inch and over category for all TVs, 100% were 4K Ultra HD TVs last year. Not only that, but for the 50 inch and over um, size category as well, 95% of those TVs were also 4K um, Ultra HD TVs. And so basically we see a, a very clear trend here that all uh, TVs over 50 inches are pretty much now 100% 4K Ultra HD TVs as well. Very positive trend for us. So how does this result in sales for Ultra HD Blu-ray? Uh, first of all, for standalone players. Although Xbox actually has a couple of their models that uh, also play back um, Ultra HD Blu-rays, not including them, so standalone only, uh, we see that in 2018 there was about a 44% increase in Ultra HD Blu-ray standalone players compared to uh, 2017. And again, for 2019, we don't expect much of a slowdown there. We're expecting 33-0% uh, increase for 2019 as well. Similar to the story, also the uh, little story I gave on percentage of 
all Blu-ray players, how many of those were Ultra HD Blu-rays, it was single digit in 2017. But what we saw in 2018 was that 15%, 1-5% actually of all um, Blu-ray players were Ultra HD Blu-ray players. So that's a very positive trend. And we're expecting that to increase to 25%, one out of every four uh, for this year will be Ultra HD Blu-ray players, we think. Um, households, we like to look at where we are worldwide households as well. Uh, we think that we reached about 4.5 million households in 2018, uh, and we're expecting that to be about 7.5 uh, by the end of this year, 2019, we're just into this new year. Uh, one of the reasons for that is um, all the major manufacturers have come out now with a pretty much full lineup. So we're seeing an entry-level model, um, sort of a, a step-up model, and then also a very high-end model from most of your major manufacturers. So this has resulted, just took a quick look at the end of the year, exactly how many models were being offered to consumers. What kind of options do consumers have? And we saw 29 worldwide different models for Ultra HD Blu-ray players and a total of 11 recorder models. The recorder models are especially made for uh, very special circumstances that we have in the Japanese market, but again, a very robust lineup for both uh, playback uh, players and uh, recorders. So that's for the hardware side. Very similar positive information for uh, the movies. Uh, for the Ultra HD Blu-ray movies in 2018, we saw an 83% increase in sales of Ultra HD Blu-ray movies compared to 2017. And again, very uh, sustainable momentum in 2019 is anticipated at 45%. So very positive there. Um, similar to what I said on the Ultra HD Blu-ray players, it's also interesting to note that 11% of all uh, Blu-ray movies sold in 2018 were now Ultra HD Blu-ray, and we're basically expecting that to double every two years. So concretely, 22% of all movies will probably be Ultra HD Blu-ray in 2020, and 40% by 2022, for example, as well. Um, the number of titles, we're also very happy to see, because this is a good indication of how much the format is really uh, being accepted uh, and being loved by the consumers. And we saw the number of titles in the United States, but also, again, trending in the other countries the exact same way. Uh, the number of titles basically increased from about, I think it was between 230 and 250 at the end of the last year. And we've, we, we anticipated that we finished last year between 430 and 450. So this past year alone, we saw 200 titles. And it's interesting to note some things happening for the first time in regards to that as well. Um, and that is the studios obviously confident enough in the format to issue all theatrical successes in the new format. But what's also really helping this increase in number of titles are things that we haven't seen so much in the past, and that is studios are also going back into their catalogs. And although they have been published in DVD and Blu-ray, and in some cases 3D Blu-ray and other formats as well, we're seeing that those same catalogs, there's enough business opportunity for the studios to reissue in Ultra HD Blu-ray again as well. So catalog titles, increase in catalog titles has been very positive for us. And then also we'll see local contents. We saw, especially in the UK, in the case of Europe, UK, Germany, France, not only, but especially those countries, there was a huge increase in the uh, number of so-called local studios, local content titles uh, in 2018 as well, especially second half. And then lastly, and again, I think you see this a lot in the UK as well, episodic TV something that hasn't been published so much on the format up until now. We also see this as the third additional category, um, in t uh, especially latter half of 2018. That's really lent itself to increasing the overall number of titles for us. It's very reassuring to hear all these statistics that the Ultra HD Blu-ray market is growing mm -hmm. despite fierce competition mm -hmm. from streaming services such as Netflix which I think is becoming increasingly popular because of the convenience, uh, let's be honest here. But why do you think that physical media still has a place in this environment? Yeah, so from the very beginning, if you, I don't know, if you maybe look at one of our interviews three or four years ago, when we first launched, you will see, you, I, I, I'm sure you will see that um, from the beginning, we talked about, we, we used the word coexistence. 
we are not dumb. We know that there are different circumstances, there are different conditions that lend themselves to viewing different uh, viewing different ways, different content as well. Number one. So and and we still stay by that. Um, so there's there's a few things here though. Additionally. Streaming services obviously rely on broadband um, and how, for example, Netflix themselves, speaking of Netflix, they say that 25 megabits per second is the speed that you want for an ideal 4K streaming experience. So if you look at a global, and um, I, I'm, I'm going to give you some information, I don't know if how you're going to share that with your following or not, but exactly globally, how many countries uh, in how many countries, how many households, the percentage of households that actually have 25 megabits per second or more uh, to be able to um, have those kinds of streaming opportunities. And you'll see in the top 10, the United States barely squeezes in at number 10. And of the nine, top nine above the United States, uh, all of them are either the uh, North European countries or your Asian countries. Um, and in fact, UK uh, does not make the top 10. I think UK, as well as uh, our other big markets where we see opportunities in Europe, France and Germany, uh, they do not make the top 10. They come in between 13 and I think number 17. So this is another reason. The window of opportunity is still there and we're just trying to maximize and, and help people realize that until uh, the broadband catches up and allows certain types of viewing experiences, especially related uh, to um, 4K and uh, higher quality type of uh, viewing experiences, Package media is your best bet. It is the perfect partner. If you're going to go out and buy a 4K Ultra HD TV, make sure that you have the right contents and the right delivery to enjoy your TV. That's basically the message that we're giving. Um, it's also interesting to note that um, we're, we've seen, I mean, and gratefully so, we're seeing the creative Hollywood community actually mentioning this in many of their appearances in the industry events as well. Um, it was about uh, at, at a recent Comic-Con that James Gunn of Disney actually mentioned how much package media, how much he thought of it, again, because of it, it just takes out um, so many of the inconsistencies and the variables that you have with other, um, especially the streaming type of um, formats. And then uh, most recently, and this was just about a month ago, we also had Christopher Nolan uh, also came out and showed great support for the Ultra HD Blu-ray format as well. How much he loves the format, the package media Ultra HD Blu-ray, because again, it takes out the inconsistencies of the streaming. Okay, at this CES 2019, 8K is a reasonably big story, and a number of manufacturers have launched 8K televisions. Will 8K be on physical media anytime soon? So within the BDA, we are currently, we, we, there is no discussion regarding 8K. Uh, a couple reasons for that, but number one, we think there's, I mean, just uh, w whether it's the household penetration number, number that I gave you earlier or things like that, the growth curves uh, for the products that we currently have with 4K and stuff, we still feel that there's a lot of work, there's a lot of opportunity um, for uh, 4K and Ultra HD Blu-ray. And so we really want to uh, maximize all of our opportunities by uh, bringing more awareness and more education to consumers regarding Ultra HD Blu-ray and what it can do for the uh, very mainstream 4K Ultra HD TVs that are already out there. Now that being said, um, as we have done with all formats up until now, and there are actually many things that we also did look into that we actually never uh, ended up making specs for. But whenever there is a particular topic that a board company or a group of board companies within the association think is worthy of discussion, we have that discussion. And uh, after all discussions done, um, it's up to the board to decide if they want to spend the association's resources on following up on any of those 
discussions or not. And so I expect the same thing. Well, I know the same things happening with the uh, 8K discussion right uh, as well. But as of right now, there is no 8K discussion uh, going on within the uh, Blu-ray Disc Association. We're at this point, and then coming back to what I was saying, we're more than happy to remind people the fact that probably the best uh, content you have for for those people that are interested in 8K TVs is the up-res possibilities with Ultra HD Blu-ray at this point. Yes, and in December 2018, which was just last month, the first HDR10 Plus Ultra HD Blu-ray titles were launched. Now, where do you see Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus? How do you see it playing out? And whether there will be eventually a title that is released in both HDR10 mm -hmm. Plus and Dolby Vision formats? Right. So the association's um, responsibility is to uh, create specifications, and then as far as business decisions go, and basically the question you're asking are, bi are business decisions. So uh, just to remind you, uh, HDR10 is um, the mandatory uh, HDR, and then we have also Dolby Vision, and there's also 10 Plus, and we also have the Technicolor Philips actually HDR as well. These are all optional HDR technologies that are already exist as part of the specifications. So as to um, which of those HDR technologies the studios decide to use, uh, which ones the hardware manufacturers decide to include in their products. Again, those are actually business decisions. The association is completely agnostic other than the mandatory optional um, information I provided you. The association is completely agnostic as to, again, and not involved in any business decisions whatsoever. Is there any discussion or work being done to add even more optional HDR specifications to the Ultra HD Blu-ray format on top of the mandatory HDR10 and the optional Dolby Vision HDR10 Plus and also Technicolor Philips that you have mentioned earlier? Uh, at this time, there are no uh, additional discussions going on regarding HDR. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Victor, for your time today. I genuinely I'm a believer in <laughs> Ultra HD Blu-ray titles because I'm a video enthusiast uh -huh. and picture quality is extremely important to me. Not only picture quality, but also the sound quality side of things. You can get the highest fidelity in terms of the audio and video from Ultra HD Blu-ray titles. So thank you very much for your time today and I hope you have a great CES. Uh, I thank you actually for again coming here and uh, sharing time with us and always enjoy talking to you. Vincent.